In football, there's the constant question of whether or not a player is elite. Are they truly good or just a product of what's around them? And there may not be a single player who's represented that debate more than Joe Flacco. It's the age old question from his time playing with the Ravens. Is Joe Flacco elite? It didn't help that he was stuck in the same era as Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, yet in one postseason, not only did Joe Flacco have arguably the greatest run in playoff history, but he knocked off both Brady and Manning before winning Super Bowl MVP after beating a dominant 49ers defense. Flacco was clutch and was no doubt elite during that one month in 2013, but was he an elite quarterback? I think Joe Flacco is actually a very elite quarterback. He earned a big contract after that ring and there were high hopes for his future in the league, but instead, he slowly sunk into irrelevancy. Flacco became a backup and was mostly forgotten about, but not completely. At age 38, after being a free agent, Flacco got off his couch and led the Browns to the playoffs. He wasn't supposed to be good after years on the bench not playing, but somehow he was. He was still that same guy that wasn't a highly sought after high school recruit who had to transfer to get playtime and eventually shocked everyone when he won a ring in Baltimore. You've never truly been able to count out Joe Flacco, and whether or not he's elite, his legacy will live on forever. The reality is, nobody wanted Joe Flacco in the 2023 offseason. He had to wait all the way until November to get a call. He had to sit and wait for his opportunity, and that's really been the story of his entire playing career. Joe Flacco committed to play for Walt Harris at Pitt as a three-star recruit in the 2003 recruiting class. He was ranked the 39th best pro-style quarterback in the class, 14 spots behind Matt Ryan, and 33 spots behind Jamarcus Russell. Both of those guys went on to be first overall picks, and have hilariously different careers. Flacco did end up redshirting as a true freshman at Pitt while senior Rod Rutherford was the starter, but there were also other guys ahead of Flacco on the depth chart, like Bears offensive coordinator Luke Getze, who ended up transferring to Akron after the season. So in 2004, Flacco was the backup to Tyler Palco. He actually started four games for the Chiefs in 2011 after Matt Castle suffered a season-ending hand injury. Flacco was stuck behind him and completed just a single pass for 11 yards and had a 25-yard punt. Yes, a 25-yard punt. You what? Pitt head coach Walt Harris ended up taking the Stanford job after the season, and Flacco decided to transfer to Delaware. This was back in 2005, by the way. The transfer portal wasn't a thing yet, and Joe Flacco wasn't even eligible to play that year. Transferring to Delaware just made sense for Joe Flacco. He wasn't getting the play time that he wanted at Pitt, and Newark, Delaware was only about an hour away from his hometown, Audubon, New Jersey. But Delaware was definitely a step down from Pitt in terms of talent. Pitt was in the Big East in 1A, and Delaware was in the A-10 in 1AA. Obviously, college football has changed quite a bit since then. The Big East and A-10 don't even sponsor football anymore, and now Pitt is in the ACC, and Delaware is in the CAA, where they moved to in 2007. The year before that, the NCAA renamed 1A to FBS and 1AA to to FCS. It's been a long time since Flacco was in college, and nowadays, he wouldn't even be ineligible for a season. But in 2005, all Flacco could do was sit in the shadows and wait for his turn to play for KC Keeler. Keeler had already won a 1AA national championship in 2003 at Delaware, led by 2004 sixth round pick Andy Hall. And recently, he won an FCS championship in 2020 with Sam Houston State. And he's still their head coach now, playing in the C. USA. Even once Joe Flacco was on the field, Delaware wasn't immediately good. They went 5-6 in 2006 and struggled. In his first collegiate season seeing full-time action, Flacco passed for 2,783 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions, and he rushed for five more touchdowns. It wasn't anything too crazy, and after that season, Flacco actually told Keeler that he wanted to be a multi-sport athlete and pitch for the Delaware baseball team. Flacco played played baseball in high school along with football and basketball. One of his four siblings, Mike, was actually drafted by the Orioles in the 31st round of the 2009 MLB draft. Tom is also a professional athlete and went undrafted in the 2020 NFL draft. 
Finally, his brother John played safety at Stanford. Then the only other brother, Brian, played Juco baseball. So baseball clearly runs in the Flacco family too. But luckily for Joe, Keeler convinced him to focus on spring football and the rest is history. He went on to throw for 4,263 yards, 23 touchdowns, and five interceptions and rushed for four touchdowns. Delaware went eight and three. And like he did in the pros, Joe Flacco led the Blue Hens on an unlikely playoff run, but they did ultimately lose in the FCS National Championship game to App State. In just two seasons in Newark, Joe Flacco became an NFL prospect and later solidified himself as a top quarterback in the class after a good senior bowl and NFL combine. There aren't a ton of eyes on you when you're playing FCS football, but that isn't necessarily the case in the NFL. Joe Flacco was a big talked about name from the second he was drafted. The Ravens had the eighth overall pick at the 2008 NFL Draft. They ended up trading down to the 26th pick before jumping back up to 18 to select Joe Flacco. It was considered a reach at the time because Flacco was still supposed to be on the board later. He ended up being the second quarterback off the board after Matt Ryan went third overall to the Atlanta Falcons. He obviously went on to have a very good career and even won the MVP in 2016. But unlike Joe Flacco, Matt Ryan never got a ring. It took the largest comeback in Super Bowl history to stop him. But now Matty Ice spends his days as an analyst for CBS Sports. No matter what, his career is always going to be linked to Joe Flacco. Ryan spent 14 years with the Falcons and is the best quarterback in franchise history. Flacco spent 11 years in Baltimore and is the best quarterback in franchise history. Now, surely Lamar Jackson is on the trajectory to change that, but not quite yet. Joe Flacco ended up being the Ravens starter from the jump as a rookie, but that wasn't initially the plan. First year head coach John Harbaugh had a three-way quarterback competition going, and Flacco somehow was the only one that came out of it healthy. Longtime starter Kyle Bowler suffered a season-ending injury in the preseason, and Heisman winner Troy Smith got sick with a rare disease. Flacco went on to start not just in the season opener, but in every game for more than seven years. In his NFL debut, the Ravens beat the Bengals 17-10. Flacco didn't throw a touchdown or interception, but he did rush for a 38-yard touchdown. At the time, it was the longest rushing touchdown by a quarterback in franchise history, which is just kind of hilarious to think about now that Lamar Jackson is there. Joe Flacco wasn't really anything great as a rookie, but he definitely had his moments and was rookie of the month in November. In all, he passed for 2,971 yards, 14 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and completed 60% of his throws. The Ravens had a good season overall, finishing 11-5 and, and making the postseason. Now, when you think back on Joe Flacco's career, he's widely known for turning it on in the playoffs, and that was very true at one point. In the early 2010s, he was one of the best playoff quarterbacks and had arguably the greatest run of all time, but that wasn't how it went early on in his career. As a rookie, Joe Flacco threw a single touchdown and three interceptions in three games. The Ravens found a way to beat the Dolphins and Titans to set up an AFC matchup against the rival Steelers, but they lost. It was still a very promising first season for the Ravens, who had a new starting quarterback and head coach. The future looked bright, and it was. Joe Flacco was a much better passer in his second season in the league. He started off the season with a bang, throwing for 307 yards and three touchdowns in a win against the Chiefs. Both of those were career highs that he went on to break during the season, including a four touchdown game against the Bears in week 15. Joe Flacco threw for 3,613 yards, 21 touchdowns and 12 interceptions with a 63.1 completion percentage. The Ravens weren't as good as the previous season at nine and seven, but they did still make the playoffs. Unfortunately, Joe Flacco was banged up and they lost in the divisional round to the Colts but not before the Ravens knocked off Tom Brady and the Patriots in the wildcard round. It was an ugly postseason for Flacco, who didn't throw a single touchdown and had three interceptions. In 2010, the Ravens went 12-4 and, and finished second in the AFC North for the third straight season. Flacco had one of the worst starts of his career in Week 2, where he threw four interceptions with just one touchdown, but he immediately bounced back the next week by passing for three touchdowns and no interceptions against the Cleveland Browns. Flacco went on 
went on to set career highs with 3,622 yards, 25 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. Now, this is when we saw a complete flip for Joe Flacco in the postseason. In his first two seasons in the league, Flacco played in five games and threw just one touchdown to six interceptions. But over the rest of his time with the Ravens, Flacco played in 10 games with 24 touchdowns to four interceptions. Yes, those numbers are correct, by the way. Joe Flacco was a legend in the playoffs and is even tied with Tom Brady for the most road playoff wins by a quarterback. One of those games was in the 2010 season against the Chiefs in the wild card. But once again, the Ravens then were eliminated by the Steelers. Luckily, Baltimore got some revenge the following regular season. In 2011, the Ravens swept the Steelers and won the AFC North for the first time in the Joe Flacco era. Flacco had four 300-yard games on the year and finished with 3,610 yards, 20 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. His good play continued into the playoffs where he had four touchdowns to one interception in two games. In the AFC Championship, Joe Flacco flat out outplayed Tom Brady, but it wasn't enough. Billy Cundiff missed the game-tying field goal with less than a minute remaining to send the Patriots to yet another Super Bowl. Baltimore kept making the playoffs, and Joe Flacco was playing well. It just wasn't all coming together. Yet. 2012. The Ravens went 10-6 and and won their division again, but it wasn't always pretty. The offense was inconsistent, and that led to offensive coordinator Cam Cameron getting fired mid-season and being replaced by quarterbacks coach and former Colts head coach Jim Caldwell. Flacco did have another solid season, with 3,817 yards, 22 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. But entering the playoffs, the Ravens weren't really supposed to be that big of a threat. The AFC ran through Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. But that didn't matter. Joe Flacco not only beat both of them that postseason, but had one of the greatest playoff runs in NFL history. Flacco had 11 touchdowns and zero interceptions. The only other player to ever accomplish that feat is Joe Montana. The Ravens blew out the Colts in the wild card 24-9, and that set up a divisional round matchup against Peyton Manning's Broncos, who had beaten the 34-17 in the regular season. It feels like every great Super Bowl run has that one play. For Eli Manning, it was the helmet catch by David Tyree. For Ben Roethlisberger, it was the throw to Santonio Holmes in the end zone. Joe Flacco's moment came in the divisional round. The Ravens were down seven with about 40 seconds remaining with no timeouts on a third and three from their own 30-yard line. Flacco launched a 70-yard touchdown pass to Jacoby Jones, the mile-high miracle and one of the greatest plays in NFL history. It sent the game to overtime and later double overtime where rookie kicker Justin Tucker drove a 47-yard field goal after a Manning interception to send the Ravens to the AFC Championship. That game wasn't quite as exciting, but the Ravens got their revenge for the previous year, beating the Patriots 28-13 to make the Super Bowl. Flacco is just one of two quarterbacks alongside Mark Sanchez to beat Brady and Peyton Manning in the postseason. The Ravens faced off against the San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl and what was the famous Harbaugh Bowl between Ravens head coach John Harbaugh and 49ers head coach Jim Harbaugh. Yet the game is more well known as the Blackout Bowl, because with the Ravens up 28-6 in the third quarter, a power outage stopped play for 34 minutes, and the 49ers raced back and were down just 28-23 heading into the fourth quarter. The Ravens did ultimately hold on after San Francisco failed to tie the game on a two-point conversion after a Colin Kaepernick touchdown, and Justin Tucker extended the lead. Joe Flacco won Super Bowl MVP after he went 22-33 of 33 for 287 yards and three three touchdowns without an interception, capping off essentially a perfect postseason run. That run was truly special, and it forever engraved Joe Flacco in NFL history. Unfortunately though, that was the peak of his career. In the offseason, Flacco signed a six-year, $120.6 million contract that made him the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. He got his bag, and that was well deserved, but 2013 was a rough season. For the first time in Joe Flacco's career, he threw more interceptions than touchdowns and didn't make the playoffs. 
He also had arguably the worst game of his pro career, throwing five interceptions against the Bills. The Ravens went 8-8 eight and eight as Flacco threw for 3,912 yards, 19 touchdowns, and 22 interceptions. It was without a doubt a disappointing season coming off of a Super Bowl victory. But then, Joe Flacco went on to have the best season of his career in 2014. Not only that, but he had the best game of his career in Week 6 against the Buccaneers, where he threw five touchdowns and 16 minutes in three seconds, an NFL record. Flacco finished the season with 3,986 yards, 27 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. The Ravens finished 10-6 and six and made the playoffs, but they almost didn't. In Week 17, the Ravens had to beat the Browns and needed the Chiefs to beat or tie with the Chargers. Luckily, it all went Baltimore's way, and the Ravens ended up playing the AFC North champion Steelers in the wild card, where they won 30-17 to behind two touchdowns from Joe Flacco. At that point, it really felt like no matter what, Joe Flacco just kept finding ways to win in the postseason. Well, that was his last playoff win with the Ravens. The following week, the defending champion Patriots won a 35-31 shootout, even though Baltimore had two different 14-point leads. From then, the time began running out on Joe Flacco in Baltimore. 2015 was a bad year. The Ravens got off to an ugly 3-7 start as Flacco passed for 2,791 yards, 14 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. Unfortunately, things went from bad to worse for the Ravens after Joe Flacco tore his ACL and MCL. You've probably heard of the time where Kobe Bryant shot free throws after he tore his Achilles or Clay Thompson doing the same thing after tearing his ACL. Well, even after Flacco tore his ACL, he stayed on the field and played through it to set up a Ravens game-winning field goal. That was just a real Really cool, underrated moment by him. But ultimately, it was just a lost season for the Ravens. Matt Schaub, Jimmy Clausen, and Ryan Mallett all started two games for Baltimore as they went 5-11. It's also worth pointing out that that's the only season the Ravens ever had a losing record with Joe Flacco on the roster. There had been a lot of success, which is why the Ravens decided to extend him for three more seasons. Then, Baltimore went 8-8 eight and eight in 2016 and missed out on the postseason again. Flacco had a franchise record 4,317 passing yards, but it came with just 20 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. In 2017, Flacco started in every game for the Ravens for the last time. He had 3,141 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. The Ravens went 9-7 and, and missed out on the playoffs, but would have made it if they didn't lose to the Bengals 31-27 in Week 17. Instead, it was the Tyrod Taylor Bills who made it. The Ravens did make the playoffs the following season, but it wasn't Joe Flacco leading the way anymore. At the 2018 NFL Draft, the Ravens traded up to take Lamar Jackson 32nd overall. Still, for the time being, Joe Flacco was the starter, but that didn't last too long. The Ravens started 4-5, and five, and Flacco wasn't playing too bad. He passed for 2,465 yards, 12 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions, but he suffered a hip injury and a Week 9 loss to the Steelers. By the time he got back, it was Lamar Jackson's team. Lamar went 6-1 and one and took Baltimore all the way to the playoffs, where they did eventually lose to the Chargers in the wild card, a lot in part to Lamar struggling. Regardless, the Ravens knew that he was the future, and it was time to move on from Joe Flacco. No matter what, Joe Flacco is going to be remembered as a Raven. After all, that's where he got his start and won a Super Bowl. He may have struggled a bit towards the end of his time in Baltimore, but that was just the beginning of Joe Flacco's downfall. Ahead of the 2019 season, the Broncos traded a fourth round pick to the Ravens for Joe Flacco. Denver drafted Drew Locke in the second round of the draft, who was expected to eventually start at some point, but Flacco started the Broncos' first eight games of the year. He passed for 1,822 yards, six touchdowns, and five interceptions, but unfortunately, he suffered a neck injury and a Week 8 loss to the Colts that ended his season. Denver had to turn to Brandon Allen, and later, Drew Locke took over. Flacco was eventually released that following March with a failed physical designation. It feels like Joe Flacco spent 30 seconds in Denver, and you had to sit there and wonder if he'd ever start again, and he did, even if it was just for the Jets. Joe Flacco spent three seasons on the Jets roster at some point or another. He signed a one-year deal with them in 2020 to be the backup to Sam Darnold, and Darnold ended up missing four games during the season due to a shoulder injury. 
The Jets lost each of those games, but Flacco wasn't playing too bad. In all, he passed for six touchdowns to three interceptions. He had half of those touchdowns in a single start, but a bad fourth quarter pick helped the Patriots rally to win 30-27. In the offseason, Flacco signed a one-year deal with the Eagles and played a ton during the preseason, but never played in a regular season game. And after Zach Wilson suffered a knee injury, the Jets decided to send a conditional sixth rounder to Philadelphia to get Flacco back. He backed up Mike White before getting the start in Week 11 against the Dolphins. Flacco went 24-39 and threw two touchdowns without a pick, but the Jets lost 24-17. That was his only start of the season. Then he decided to come back on another one-year deal, and after Zach Wilson tore his meniscus in the preseason, Flacco was suddenly the starter for the first three games of the year. And Flacco played great in week two, as the Jets beat the Browns 31-30. He went 26-44 of for 307 yards and four touchdowns with no interceptions. The Jets did lose Flacco's other two starts, and between those two losses, Flacco had just one touchdown and three interceptions. Wilson returned, but then he was benched after not taking accountability after a bad 10-3 loss to the Patriots. However, this time around, the Jets turned to Mike White before the Jets started their game of musical chairs at quarterback. Flacco got the start in Week 18 after White broke his ribs, and he didn't throw a touchdown or interception and a boring 11-6 loss to Miami. That felt like the nail in the coffin for Joe Flacco's career. It was reasonable to think that he'd retire or never play again, and that almost happened. For the first 11 weeks of the 2023 season, Joe Flacco was a free agent. Nobody called until Deshaun Watson suffered a fracture in his throwing shoulder, ending his year. The Browns decided to sign Flacco to the practice squad, and there were still two quarterbacks on the active roster. P.J. Walker had already started a couple of games and had thrown a single touchdown to five interceptions. It wasn't very hard to see that he wasn't the answer at quarterback for a team fighting for a playoff spot. However, the Browns' hope was that fifth-round rookie Dorian Thompson Robinson was. He played really well in the preseason, and there was a lot of buzz around him. But once he got his chance to start in Week 3, it wasn't pretty. DTR threw three interceptions, and Cleveland got absolutely crushed 28-3 by the Ravens. He was forced back into the starting role after Watson got hurt and later threw his first career touchdown in week 12, but he also suffered a concussion in the 29-12 loss to the Broncos. That opened the door for Joe Flacco to start in week 13 against the Rams. And it wasn't perfect. The Rams won 36-19 and Flacco finished 23-44 of for 254 yards and two touchdowns with an interception. It wasn't anything special, but it was enough for Flacco to get the start the following week. And Cleveland started to get hot. The Browns got a gritty, hard-fought win against the Jaguars, 31-27, and Joe Flacco was slinging it. He went 26-45 of for 311 yards and three touchdowns without an interception. I mean, who would have expected a 38-year-old Joe Flacco to go out there and pass for multiple touchdowns at over 300 yards? Well, he was just getting started. The Browns almost lost and probably should have against the Bears the following week. Flacco had three interceptions, but he also went 20 28 of 44 for 374 yards and two touchdowns in a comeback win. It was ugly, but it didn't matter. The next week was against the Texans, who were without CJ Stroud due to a concussion, and Flacco again put on a show, passing for 368 yards, three touchdowns to two interceptions, while going 27 of 42. Cleveland won 36 to 22 for their third straight victory. Suddenly, Cleveland was on the brink of qualifying for the postseason, thanks to Joe Flacco, an unlikely hero. With the nation watching in Week 17 against the Jets, who had a great passing defense all season long, Flacco tore them to shreds in the first half, finishing 19 of 29 for 309 yards and three touchdowns to an interception. The Browns won 37 to 20, and after back-to-back -back losing seasons, are back in the playoffs. Thanks to Joe Flacco, nobody in their right mind could have predicted Joe Flacco going from his couch to leading a good Brown team to the playoffs in a single month. He's beaten the odds so many times in his football career, and he might not be done just yet.